All right. My name is Pete Eisenbach. I'm a U.S. Army veteran. Go Army. Uh, served from 1985 to 1990. Got out in 1990. Uh, after I got out of the Army, I went to a guide school, which taught us mountain survival. Uh, I was actually taught our guide school and mountain survival course by Rudy Rudabaugh, who is a descendant of one of the, Dave, I believe his name was Dave Rudabaugh of the James Gang. So he was passed on, a writer of the James Gang, taught some of this knowledge was passed down to us in this mountain survival course that we went to, and it, that was pretty cool. Kind of like here on my family property that I own, the trees behind me there that I'm, I gathered some of my tinder and fuel from to shoot, do this fire demonstration was planted by my great grandfather in 1880 something. And I'm using his tree that he planted for a new beginning to hopefully start a new beginning for myself on the show alone. Been watching that show, absolutely love it. It looks like the perfect challenge for what I want to try with my background in uh, mountain survival and guiding, big game hunting, and uh, everything else I've done in my life. I'm a very avid outdoor outdoorsman, love hunting, fishing, do most of my hunting with a compound bow now, but I used to strictly use a recurve. I've taken many nice whitetails with both bow and gun. Love to small game hunt. Uh, just love the shooting sports in general. So I'm going to be doing a demonstration on very simple how to start a fire using kits. Fire starting kit I always carry with me and I'm in a backpack if I'm hunting out in the mountains or in a tackle box if I'm hunting or fishing out of my boat. And uh, it's a magnesium bar and a ferro rod or there's a Straker on the back of the magnesium bar too. So here's a well, a little more about me. I guess I'm 50 years old. I'm relatively fit. You know, I work as a carpenter now. <laughs> I uh, just, you know. Love the outdoors, and I think this would be a good fit for me. So I'm going to give you a little close-up of what my stuff here is. It's all self, self-shot self video on alone. So here's what I'm using to start the fire. Okay, so I don't know if I can talk. You can see me at the same time here and give it a whirl. I've got dried balsam fir needles, some of the little twigs, some shavings off of the balsam fir that I've taken, and I've got them all the way up to a little bit bigger here. Uh, you know, I'll get the camera set up a little closer here. Here, here's my smartphone. all the editing and everything so there get that out of the screen so we're gonna start our fire again I'm just using basic tools I'm gonna split a log that I small log that I cut off I'm gonna split it in half to give myself a base to start the fire on So, I'm going to take that base, I'm going to put it into the, wedge it into the ground a little more, 
that little groove in it right here that I'm going to try to shave the magnesium into. I'm going to use a buck knife, magnesium. And the magnesium, it's one of the things that Rudy taught us in the survival school, one of his sayings was, if you're dumb enough to go out in the woods without a lighter in your pocket, you don't belong to go out in the woods. You don't deserve to go out in the woods. But even if you do pack a lighter and the lighter fails, it's a mechanical device. It's a good thing to have this stuff along with you, and I've always have. So it's been wet here. It rains <laughs> every day, so the tinder and the fuel I'm getting is hanging stuff that's dead in the tree from an ice storm a few years ago. So that's relatively dry. I've had to use the dead needles because that's what I have here that's dry enough to burn and they work really well so I've got a pretty good pile of magnesium there now so I'm going to stay with that. It's not windy it shouldn't blow away on me. Now I'm going to take Find the driest of the dry here and break off some little and I want to get this as compact as I can right over the top of the magnesium. I've got plenty more here with me that I'm going to put, stack alongside it. Once that starts, I'll stack more of my fuel that I've got ready up here. That was just a, kind of an example of how easy a few dollar magnesium starter and a few dollars for might save your life someday. Here we go, it's as easy as that, and strike a, put a spark into the magnesium. And it flashed, just like it always does. <laughs> that one burned too fast. I didn't pack it down in there good enough. Here we go, we'll get some more magnesium going. That's the story of fire starting without matches. It's preparation, preparation, preparation. But perseverance and determination gets you through with just about anything. Um, there we go again. I got a pretty good pile. We're going to get some more just to make sure. And if it doesn't go this time, we'll try again. That's the key is just to keep, never give up, keep trying. It's going to go eventually. And this time, just in case she goes I'm going to put a little of this stuff nearby. Help hold it down, keep it on there. Here we go again. Take two. <laughs> Tell me these 
find it. Everything's so wet. Let's see here. Imagine that. <laughs> well, you got to have a good attitude, and what they say a little bit ago, you got to try again. So they're gonna. So the guide school I went to was, you know, we hunted with archery and rifle, mainly for elk. So. One of the, if you're in the Rocky Mountains, you got the spruce grouse, it's pretty easy. You can throw rocks at them to find some kill, kill food. It's also the porcupine, which is found every place in a, North America. You can pretty much chase down and club. Then you got fishing. But, most of my survival has been taught. I've tried to teach my kids as I take them out hunting and stuff is to, if you're stuck overnight someplace, you got all you need a fire for is to stay warm. If you've brought water with you, great, you know, but it's just to get you overnight. And in the morning, you can look around, you can probably find some water. Around here in Wisconsin, water is everywhere. We're like in water nirvana here. And uh, springs are every place. The one I live in is called Spring Valley. Any hint? So my survival stuff has mainly been just a short term. And the show along, alone, sure sounds like it. So... I'm guessing that my problem is my tinder just isn't dry enough. We're going to try it again, see what happens. That's enough to make a preacher swear. Can't even get one going this morning with a magnesium. Fourth time going to be a charm here. Let me try something else for. Try some of this. base layer. Switch her up a little bit. Wasn't working. 
try another tactic with what I've got besides going out to gather more. So, stand ready with my other stuff here. Again. Perseverance. almost had it that time I had a coal going why I can't get him to stay let's just try the ferro rod Got us player. I can keep her going. Breathe a little air. Well, I'm just going to regroup here. I know I can get it. It's not that wet. We're going to get it. There. 
this is just fire starting. It isn't difficult, it's just even somebody that knows how to do it. Once in a while it takes a couple of tries. <laughs> Especially in wet conditions and having to get stuff. But there's our little fire and I just keep adding to it and adding to it and it'll get us our fire. We went out a little bit. I got smoke and I hear crackling. So there we have it. The Alone Show. I'd love to give it a try. It'd be a good challenge for me. Self-shot videos are a challenge in themselves. You know, so everything's a... a challenge. That's kind of what I look forward to in life. So, I'm going to got to breathe a little new life into this again. a little damp. Like I said, it's been raining. Only stuff that really wants to burn was the shavings. There you go. Fire starting 101. Real basic. <laughs>